Hey guys, Clint here with Classic Firearms, coming at you guys with another little uh, bunker video and a little bit more of a uh, discussion video again. Guys, you probably saw our, you know, video where we covered a little bit like uh, what is, you know, semi or single action only or <laughs> there I am trying to say semi action only. That's not right. Anyway, single action only versus double action only versus hammered fire and all that kind of stuff. We had a couple videos like that come out. And uh, what we're talking about today is I kind of mistakenly said in that video that Glocks are all time double action only. That's not true per se. They are striker fired and kind of in a class of their own. So today we're talking about striker fired versus hammer fired, which, you know, hammer fired. Uh, and which one is the right one for you? So let's hop right into it. First off, let's talk about the uh, mechanisms behind both. Both are under spring tension. However, the spring on this guy is in a horizontal position and it's kind of like if you think about a pin, I don't have one laying around here. You ever take apart a pin, you know, one of the click type, and then it's got that spring around the actual ink stick itself and the actual point. Imagine that, if you will, as the striker and the, I guess you'd say the firing pin, all right? And uh, what that does is once you cock it, now that striker is recessed and that spring is under tension and then once you pull the trigger, boom. What's happening is that spring is released, that striker is going forward, it's now hitting the primer of the bullet causing an explosion, which is that explosion of the primer being struck, all those, high, all those powders being lit, and then those gases forcing around up the barrel. Sweet, right? So you kind of have a similar I guess you could say operation with hammer fired, it's just kind of a different delivery method, right? So now we've got this guy here, double action, single action. Um, but what we'll notice is this is still under spring tension, right? You can see how everything is still under spring tension, mainspring, things like that taking place in the grip. All right, except here, whenever I pull the trigger, what's happening is there's a break, right? Boom, and then that hammer comes forward. That's what strikes the firing pin, and then the firing pin hits the primer, and then sending the bullet out the barrel. Pretty cool, right? All right. That's a very shortened version of kind of the difference between hammer fired and striker fired. Hammer fired, you have an external hammer, which you can visually see, right? Sometimes they might be flush with the gun. You know, there's some manufacturers out there that make concealed carry options that have, you know, flush hammer, recessed hammer, whatever it might be, or, you know, a little stub. Or, there's all sorts of different types of hammers out there. But nonetheless, hammer fired has a hammer that you can visually see, okay? Striker fired, you cannot tell whether this guy is pretty much in a cocked position. There are some manufacturers that have like a little red indicator that shows that the striker is, you know, under, under tension and ready to be pulled. The only real way you can tell on like a Glock if, you know, the striker is not set is kind of by looking at the trigger. Notice how far back the trigger is. That's pretty much at its breaking point. That's, that's all the way back up against the wall. Now, the moment that I cock this guy, you'll notice the trigger go forward, right? Boom. Now the striker's under tension and it's ready to be shot. Okay. So which one is best for you? Well, of course, in all these videos, I'm going to tell you, get out there, practice with both and see, but maybe going in with a little bit of knowledge beforehand might help a little bit. So there's arguments for both striker fired and hammer fired and which one's best for you. Now, I will tell you this and I'll just go ahead and, you know, be a little biased if you will. This used to be my everyday carry, all right? Now, this is still my concealed carry option even with the optic and suppressor raised heights with a correct holster and correct placement, you can just about concealed carry anything. And of course, with practice and training, you'll be able to draw from a concealed position, get on target and shoot and hit your target, all right? So this is still my everyday carry gun, but on my battle belt, stuff like that, typically I'm running an FNX 45 tactical, hammer fired gun, or my Brett M9A3 that you see right here, hammer fired gun. Now, the argument for why you shouldn't run a hammered fired gun, especially in a high stress situation or whatever else it might be, there's a few, okay? Those arguments are, for one, let's say you go to pull the trigger, but something interferes or blocks the hammer from striking the firing pin. For instance, if I do that number, the gun's not gonna shoot, all right? If I just put my finger there and pull the trigger, the hammer is not going to strike the firing pin. The firing pin is not going to strike the primer. The primer is not going to explode and cause, you know, that little explosion to send the bullet down range and you're not going to hit your target. All right. However, you're not going to have that issue with a striker fired pistol because there's nothing to block here. It doesn't matter what I do to this gun. It's going to shoot. 
Not true. Because there are other ways to actually cause a malfunction to prevent a firearm from shooting. For instance, setting it out of battery. Not gonna shoot, just like that. Granted, is that safe to do? No, but hey, I know I'm clear here and for instructional purposes, I'm showing you guys pretty much how to cause a malfunction, okay? So if you have something blocking the barrel, if you're putting it up against something tight like this here, it's not gonna shoot. That's all there is to it. Same can be said here. If the gun is not in battery, it's not gonna shoot. That's all there is to it, all right? Um, other things. Some people really like consistency. You don't get consistency with double action, single action firearms, and here's why. Uh, you'll notice right now it's pretty much in a double action mode. That means you're gonna have a very long drawn trigger pull until that hammer drops. However, once the gun cycles after that first round, now you notice the trigger's a little bit further back. You have a single action movement now where the trigger's gonna be a little bit lighter and you have less travel before the hammer falls. A lot of people don't like this for this main reason right here, consistency. What they're afraid of is in a stressful situation, if I go and draw my gun and I'm starting to pull that trigger, that the double action on a hammer fired gun might be too much and might throw my shot off. Where on my follow up shot, it might be too little and now I'm firing unintentionally too soon. You don't get that with a striker fired gun because it's always consistent. You're always going to have that same trigger pull no matter what, right? Okay, so argument for striker fired is it's completely consistent. It's never going to change trigger pull unless you change the trigger weight or trigger, you know, you've got trigger springs, things like this here that you can change internally. Me, I've got a little apex trigger on here, but I keep it a little heavy. It's not so light that I can just, you know, breathe on it and the thing, you know, does its job. No, I keep mine at a right around four to five pounds. I think that's a pretty decent carry weight because I don't want it to be so light that if I accidentally snag it or something or somehow I actually manage to depress the trigger unintentionally. I know there's ways to think about this. Uh, unintentionally pressing the trigger. Well, if you kept your finger off the trigger, it wouldn't be an issue, but you never know. It could get snagged. I, I know you guys may have seen the meme out there where the guy had like a little leather holster and he put it in his back pocket and the holster actually came right up in here and pulled the trigger and he shot himself right in the butt. So make sure the holsters you're using guys are reliable. So just go out there, practice, train, and don't shoot yourself in the butt, okay? Anyway, or don't be the guy, I just shot myself. All right, so don't be that guy either, okay? Go out there, practice, train, and make sure you're not being ridiculous with your firearms. Make sure that you're being, you're being practical, okay? All right, so striker fired, you have that consistency, okay? Hammer fired, now a lot of people like the fact that on this gun right here, it's pretty much got like a, already a natural carry situation to it. Some people like the fact that you've got that longer trigger pull on the double action on your first round. Why? Because the, again, same argument as for why the consistency is here is you don't have to worry about accidentally shooting that gun too soon. It's not gonna throw you off, or maybe not even accidentally, just unintentionally, just, you know, whenever it's cocked and back, that second round's nice and quick. Well, if you don't practice with your gun, you're not in that mindset, you might think that your first shot is gonna be that heavy, and then you might think your second shot is gonna be that heavy, when it won't be. So it's something you really have to practice with. And it's something that I saw a lot in the Marines where guys were going up uh, for their pistol qualification and they couldn't understand because some of these people never shot pistol before. Understand that a lot of times in the military, this is the first time a lot of people ever pull the trigger on a gun, okay? So whenever they start getting up there, they're going to shoot their first target, boom, and then they go to pull the trigger after the gun is cycled for that second target and it's whoa, that went off way too quick. What just happened? Is my gun defective? It's like, well, no. This is why I always practice and preach dry fire before you go to the range, or it, just if you're sitting at home, not doing anything, just sit there and practice. Right? Get a feel for your gun. Get a feel for where it resets, you know? Uh, but anyway, and you'll see that at the range, uh, at least for whenever I saw it at the, you know, where people were, Marines were pistol qualling, and it's like, oh man, that was, that was really short, maybe. What, what, what just happened to my gun? Well, no, that's the way it's supposed to work. And it's great for a carry mindset because, again, you can keep this guy, depending on which model Beretta you have, this is the M9A3 uh, G model, I think. The G model is the one that has the safety end to cocker. Yeah. 
F model is? Okay. So anyway, I never remember. I just know what I have. But uh, anyway, so let's say you're, ke you're keeping it, you know, off safe. It's on fire right now. Uh, I actually like the idea of carrying it just like this because again, you have that heavier first trigger pull, that double action, right? I'm completely comfortable with that. Now, a lot of times if I'm just keeping it in the car, whatever else, as I'm riding along, I'll have it on safe too. Just, you know, an extra, extra amount of safety, you know, but if it's on my person, usually I'll keep it right on fire and then I'm ready to draw, aim, boom, right? Right, so there's that. Now, again, if you're like me and probably not the best idea, but hey, I do it anyway, okay? Uh, and you actually switch from gun to gun to gun to gun to gun. You know, the, again, this is kind of like my everyday carry. I carry a concealed carry, concealed position. I need to make sure that before I go out anywhere, I'm just getting fitted in my clothing. I'm concealing my firearm. I keep it empty. And all I do is just do a couple of runs where I'm, again, drawing it from a concealed position and shooting. Cool. Before I go outside, let's just say I'm walking down the hallway, all of a sudden I just want to do this. Does it seem crazy? Maybe, but I need to get in the mindset, again, muscle memory of what gun I'm carrying because I switch a lot. And also, am I comfortable in the clothing that I am when I'm going out in public with a concealed firearm? You need to make sure you're comfortable, you're not printing. If you don't know what printing is, that's pretty much whenever, typically it's the grip. It might look weird, it might look like you have something, you know, doing this number on your shirt, if you have that happening while you're going out in public, people are gonna be like, you're not concealed carrying, I can see it right there, dude, what are you doing, right? So all of this kind of stuff taken into consideration. Striker fired, hammer fired, what's best for you? Let me know down in the comments what you guys think. If I missed anything, let me know. Ooh, one other benefit to double action guns is your second strike capability, which pretty much means, let's say you pull the trigger, Nothing happens, you have a round in the chamber, now you're like, uh, maybe it was a weak strike. Uh, let's try it one more time. Boom, you never know. I, it could just be a dead round, you know, I mean, it could be a light, light primer strike. You don't know, but you do have that second strike capability with double action guns, where you do not have that with striker, fiker, striker, uh, striker fired or single action only guns. Well, actually, even single action only guns you do, because you can just pull the hammer back. Well, when it's not unsafe, pull the hammer back, pull the trigger again. So single action, double action only, you have that second strike capability where striker fired, you do not. You do actually have to reset the trigger. You'll hear it click and then you'll hear that, see the trigger rise forward. So uh, there's, there's benefits to both, right? Again, consistency, things like that. And then just, you know, training, getting your mindset behind a double action, single action gun. I, I love double action, single action guns. That's why my two primaries, well, I got three primaries, I guess you could say, but the two that I love most, my M9A3 and my FNX 45 tactical, tactical that are pretty much on my crap has hit the fans, you know, scenario type of build out or load out. Yeah, that's why they're these guys, so. I don't know. You guys let me know down in the comments. I just kind of wanted to educate you guys a little bit. If I missed something, again, let me know. If I got something wrong, definitely let me know. Don't need to be putting out any uh, inaccurate information out there. There's already <laughs> way too much of that, okay? All right, guys, we'll leave it off there. Last thing I want to talk to you guys about is a super cool pistol to shoot, and that is that SMG 45 tactical right up here on this wall that you see. It's uh, a heck of a lot of fun. It's also our current giveaway, and we're also throwing in a couple of these little guys from IWA International. Take a look at that. Now, it may look like a smoke grenade. That's because it is. It's not literally a grenade, right? I mean, it's, you know, that's you know, considered a destructive device type of stuff like that, you know, military only. Blah. But this is a smoke emitting device. And if you want to see how cool this freaking thing is, go check out our video announcing the SMG 45 as our giveaway, because, Ryan makes me look cool, and we have a whole lot of fun with smoke. That's all there is to it. All right, I'm leaving it off there. SMG 45 with the Vortex Crossfire is our current giveaway. We're throwing in a couple of those little smoke emitting devices from IWA International. Again, I'll see you guys down in the comments. Hammer fired, striker fired, all that fun stuff. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Look forward to hearing from you guys. God bless, and we'll see you at classicfirearms.com.